Yet. Today we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter 9, the passing away of Bhishma Dev, text number 40. Lalita Gati Vilasa Vargo Hasya Panaya Nirakshana Kalpito Romana Krita Manu Krita Vatya Unmadanda Pakrita Magan Kila Yasya Gopavadva Lalita Gati Vilasa Vargo Hasya Pranaya Nirikshana Kalpito Romana Krita Manu Krita Vatya Unmandananda Pakrita Magan Kila Yasya Gopavadva Lalita, attractive, gati, movements, vilas, fascinating acts, vagohasa, sweet smiling, pranaya, loving, nirikshana, looking upon, kalapita, mentality. Urumana, highly glorified. Kritamanu Kritavata, in the act of copying the movements. Onmara Adanda, gone mad in ecstasy. Prakritim, characteristics. Agan, underwent. Kila, Kila, certainly. Yasya, Yasya whose? Who's. Gopavadva, the cowherd damsels. Translation. Let my mind be fixed upon Lord Sri Krishna, whose motions and smiles of love attracted the damsels of Brajabhumi, the gopis. The damsels imitated the characteristic movements of the Lord after his disappearance from the Rasa dance. Please repeat. Let my mind be fixed upon Lord Sri Krishna, whose motions and smiles of love attracted the damsels of Brajabhumi, the gopis. The damsels imitated the characteristic movements of the Lord after his disappearance from the Rasa dance. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. By intense ecstasy and loving service, the damsels of Brajabhumi attained qualitative oneness with the Lord by dancing with him on an equal level, embracing him in nuptial love, smiling at him in joke, and looking at him with a loving attitude. The relation of the Lord with Arjuna is undoubtedly praiseworthy for devotees like Bhishma Dev. But the relation of the gopis with the Lord is still more praiseworthy because of their still more purified loving service. By the grace of the Lord, Arjuna was fortunate enough to have the fraternal service of the Lord as a chariot driver. But the Lord did not award Arjuna with equal strength. The gopis, however, practically became one with the Lord by attainment of equal footing with the Lord. Bhishma's aspiration to remember the gopis is a prayer to have their mercy also at this last stage of his life. The Lord is satisfied more with him when his pure devotees are glorified, and therefore Bhishma Dev has not only glorified the acts of Arjuna, his immediate object of attraction, 
but has also remembered the gopis who are endowed with unrivaled opportunities by rendering loving service to the Lord. The gopis' equality with the Lord should never be misunderstood to be like the suhujya liberation of the impersonalists. The equality of one, the equality is one of perfect ecstasy where the differential conception is completely eradicated for the interests of the lover and the beloved become identical. Om Gyanet Timirandasya Gyananda unfolding and going into the depths of his consciousness. So I want to focus more on that rather than just this one concept of the gopis and their mood. That's a whole other uh, topic and discussion. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Mamaiva Masa, Jiva Loke, Jiva Bhuta, Sanatana, that the living entities are fragmental parts, eternal fragmental parts of him. So each individual spark has an inherent nature. It's, it's, it's like a seed. A seed has something within it. And if the seed is put in the proper environment, put it in the ground, proper sunlight, proper watering, then that atmosphere agitates the seed to germinate its inherent natural characteristics. In this world, the material world, when a jiva takes birth, they're covered by an ahankar, a false concept of the self, of that eternal self, that eternal inherent quality and characteristic becomes covered by the modes of material nature and by the ingredients of material nature. And the living entity identifies itself as that entity rather than its eternal inherent self. Vishmadev, uh, I'm going to go back and go through his different prayers. And as we do this, we can see how he's like unfolding and transforming his consciousness to his eternal self. He's actually becoming absorbed in that eternal self as he transforms through these verses. Starts in text 30. Thereupon, that man who spoke on different subjects with thousands of meanings and who thought on fought on thousands of battlefields and protected thousands of men stopped speaking. And being completely freed from all bondage, withdrew his mind from everything else and fixed his wide-opened eyes on the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, who stood before him, forehanded, dressed in yellow garments and glittered and sh that glittered and shined. Uh, Pran, can we get Bhagavad Gita 8.6 on the board? We can see that the whole pastime of the Pandavas coming to Bhishma's de Bhishma Dev's deathbed and his speaking with Yudhisthira is the prelude to these events. At, at this point in text 30, everything changes. He stopped speaking, and he started to transform and, and, and what did it say? Stopped speaking, be completely freed from bondage, withdrew his mind from everything else, 
and fixed his mind on the personality of God. Had this famous verse. Let's do it together. Yam yam vapi smaram bhavam tajantiyam takalevaram tam tam evaiti kanteya sadata bhava bhavita. Can you do the word, word for word? Notice how many times the word bhava is in this one verse. So let's do the, word, the, the, the synonyms. Yam yam, whatever. Va api, at all. Smaram, remembering. Here's the first one. Bhavam, nature. Jadati, gives up. Ante, at the end. Kalevaram, this body. Tam tam, similar. Eva, certainly. Eti, gets. Kantea, O son of Kunti. Sada, always. Tat, that. Second one, Bhava, state of being. And the third one, Bhavita, remembering. So in this verse, the word bhava means nature, state of being, and remembering. So bhava is kind of like a mood, but there's more to it. It's a state of being, depending on what category of bhava we're focusing on. There are, there are bhavas, that we've heard of sthayi bhava, Yabhichari bhava, vi bhava, anu bhava, sattvika bhava. How can there be so many different bhavas? They're all, they're all parts and inherent qualities that manifest in the living entity. But there's one steady current which flows continually, although different moods may manifest in the living entity, as it goes through life, the, the main current and steady inherent quality nature of that living entity never changes. That's called the stai bhava. Stai bhava is the nature of the living entity in its relationship with Krishna. And just like a river flows, let's take the Ganges for example, it comes, it's a spiritual entity who presides over that, and, and she descends into the material world and goes through various heavenly planets and comes down to earth and flows from Gangotri all the way to the Bay of Bengal. So all along her course, there are so many different moods that manifest. Sometimes she's placid and peaceful. Sometimes she flows very heavily. Sometimes she goes around corners and sometimes she goes really straight. So those are all the different manifestations that develop as she flows, but that identity of Ganga and, her, and, who, and what she is never changes. That's the Stai Bhava. So we all have a Stai Bhava. And Bhishma Dev is transforming his mind from events of this world and the temporary manifestations and flickering moods that it presents, and he's diving deep into his identity. Text 32. Bhishma Dev said, Let me now invest my thinking, feeling, and willing, which were so long engaged in different subjects and occupational duties, in the all-powerful Lord Sri Krishna, <coughs> He is always self-satisfied, but sometimes being the leader of the devotees, he enjoys transcendental pleasure by descending to the material world, although from him only the material world is created. Sri Krishna is the intimate friend of Arjuna. He has appeared on this earth in his transcendental body, which resembles the bluish color of the tamal tree. His body attracts everyone in the three planetary systems upper, middle, and lower. This is an interesting concept. The mood, the bhava, in the living entity, 
just like gravity and wind push the river, what current, what energy propels the bhava in the living entity? Gati for Krishna. Krishna is all attractive to every living entity. And each of those individual sparks with its individual nature, which are all different and independent individually, are all attracted. That's why he's called Krishna. All attractive. Everyone is attracted to Krishna in their different way. So he's attractive to all living entities throughout the universe, upper, middle, and lower planetary systems. May his glittering yellow dress and his lotus face covered with paintings of sandalwood pulp be the object of my attraction, and may I not desire fruitive activities. On the battlefield, where Krishna attended Arjuna out of friendship, the flowing hair of Lord Krishna turned ashen due to dust raised by the hoofs of the horses. And because of his labor, beads of sweat wetted his face. All these decorations intensified the wounds dealt by my sharp arrows, which were enjoyed by him. Let my mind thus go unto Lord Sri Krishna. Now he's starting, he's starting to remember. He's, he's, he's brought his mind from all his instructions to Yudhisthira. And he's remembering that person in front of him, Krishna, with the, with the, with the dust from the horses, the blood flowing from his, from his uh, wounds. And Srila Prabhupada describes in the purport. Bhishmadev's throwing of sharp arrows at the transcendental body of the Lord is as good as the worship of another devotee who throws soft roses upon him. It appears that Bhishma Dev is repenting the actions he committed against the person of the Lord. But factually, the Lord's body was not at all pained due to his transcendental existence. Bhishma Dev appreciated the all merciful attitude of the Lord because he did not leave Arjuna alone, although he was disturbed by the sharpened arrows of Bhishma Dev, nor was he reluctant to come before Bhishma Dev's deathbed, even though he was ill treated by him on the battlefield. Bhishma Dev's repentance of the Lord's and the Lord's merciful attitude are both unique in this picture. Srila Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur, the great acharya and devotee in the humor of conjugal love with the Lord, remarks very saliently in this regard. He says that the wounds created on the body of the Lord by the sharpened arrows of Bhishma Dev were as pleasing to the Lord as the biting of a fiancé who bites the Lord's body directed by a strong sense of sex desire. Such biting by the opposite sex is never taken as a sign of enmity, even if there is a wound on the body. Therefore, the fighting is an exchange of transcendental pleasure between the Lord and his pure devotee, Sri Bhishma Dev, and was not at all mundane. Besides that, since the Lord's body and the Lord are identical, there was no possibility of wounds in his absolute body. The apparent wounds caused by the sharpened arrows are misleading to the common man, but one who has a little absolute knowledge can understand the transcendental exchange of the chivalrous relation. So it's a chivalrous relation. This is also a sub-bhava, gona bhava but with Bhishma Dev, it's inherent as well as a in a blend with his thai bhava. It's not just a servant. He's not just a friend. He's not just a mother or a father. There's a blend of the different. At the end of the nectar of devotion, you'll read these different uh, rasas and how they blend together in different characters and manifest in different time, places, and circumstances. So Bhishma Dev's, what's being revealed throughout this chapter is Bhishma Dev's, the, the, the essence of it, is Bhishma Dev's eternal relationship with the Lord. And he's entering into that in his prayers. Text 35. In the obedience to the command of his friend, Lord Sri Krishna entered the arena of the battlefield of Kuruksetra between the soldiers of Arjuna and Duryodhana. And while there, 
He shortened the lifespans of the opposite party by his merciful glance. This was done simply by his looking at the enemy. Let my mind be fixed upon that, Krishna. He's being specific. What form of the Lord and what personality manifested by the Lord he's attracted to. When Arjuna was seemingly polluted by ignorance upon observing the soldiers and commanders before him on the battlefield, the Lord eradicated his ignorance by delivering transcendental knowledge. May his lotus feet always remain the object of my attraction. Fulfilling my vow and sacrificing his own promise, he got down from the chariot, took up its wheel, and ran towards me hurriedly, just as a lion goes to kill an elephant. He even dropped his outer garment on the way. Can you play my uh, tape there, please? This is a lecture by Srila Prabhupada. Just like in love, there's foreplay. This event is a prelude, some foreplay between the Lord no. and Bhishma Dev. Huh? No, this is not it. Please, this is the wrong, wrong, wrong clip, wrong clip. Yes. In the Mahabharata, these stories are there. Thank you. And Bhishma Dev actually had some affection. So, Vijayadham thought that my grandfather is not fighting properly because the other side is beloved grandson. I am also grandson, but I am not so beloved. But the other side, Pandava, because they are fatherless, he has more affection for them. So, he is officially fighting. He is not fighting with his real ego. He complained them. But actually that was the fact that, my dear grandfather, you are not fighting with Arjun with your full view. I can understand. Hmm? I am not fighting. Hmm? So what do you think? Hmm? Now I want that you decide to kill them all to all. Hmm? You can do that. All right, I shall do that. Hmm? If you are doubting about my fighting, then I shall. Uh, so uh, he made a special five arrows to kill the five brothers next day. Uh, so Dujadhan uh, asked his grandfather that let me keep these five arrows with me. I shall deliver you tomorrow morning. Otherwise, it may be missing. Uh, so all these things. Krishna is uh, Paramatma, he knows everything. So he th saw that there is danger tomorrow. Now this has decided uh, to kill all these Pandavas. So he asked Arjun, uh, Arjun, you just go approach Dujyadhan this evening. Uh, formerly the practice was Daytime there is fight, but in the after evening there are friends. After evening, the friends. One can go this time, that time, and talk together, sit together, just like friends. There is no enemy. So, uh, Dujyadhan sometimes promised to John that I want to give you some benediction. You can ask. So, John said, uh, Dujyadhan was elder than Arjun. So I will ask you in proper time. Uh, so Krishna reminded that today, tonight you go to Dujyadhan and ask him uh, to deliver those five arrows uh, kept in secret. Uh, otherwise tomorrow you will be finished. So Dujyadhan went to, uh, Arjun went to Dujyadhan in the camp, the Vajjana received him well. Come on, brother, what do you want? He thought that we are fighting, Arjuna has come to break the kingdom without fighting. So they are so liberal, he said. Yes, come I mean, in. If you want the kingdom without fighting, I am prepared. 
But a Kshatriya will never beg or give me child without no. If they can own by fighting, then they will pay. This is Kshatriya spirit. So he said that, no, I have not come to beg the kingdom. We shall fight, go on fighting. But I want those five arrows you have kept. Oh, immediately there is. Uh, although you are very cautious that these five okay, uh, arrows may not be missing, but promise is promise immediately he delivered. Uh, so Bhishma understood later on that the five arrows were taken by Yogyam, by three. So he still he promised that even without those five weapons, tomorrow, today I shall kill you. Unless Krishna gives his special protection to Arjuna, there is no escape. Either Krishna has to uh, uh, break his promise, otherwise his friend will be killed. Uh, so uh, Krishna, when he joined Arjuna, he said that he would not fight. I can help you simply by becoming your charioteer, but I cannot fight. Because the purpose was that Arjuna has to gain the fight. But if Krishna would fight, people would say, but Krishna owned the fight, not Arjuna, that we have had a fight. It was sure Krishna fights or not fights, because he was on the side of Arjuna. It, is, it was sure that he would gain the battle. That is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Jatra Yoga Sarohari. Where there is Krishna, the victory is assured. So in this way, there is fierce fighting between Arjuna and Vishnu. And Arjuna's uh, chariot became broken into pieces and he fell down. And when Krishna saw that now Arjuna is going to be killed, he broke his own promise. Uh, he broke his own promise and took one wheel of the chariot and reached before Bhishma that now I shall kill you. Bhishma immediately gave up his weapon. So that was my promise that I wanted that either you have to break your promise or your friend will be killed. But now you have broken your promise, so I am giving up. Because it is not expected that I shall fight with you. <laughs> so uh, Krishna said that, yes, I have kept your promise, but I have broken my promise. Uh, you decided, you promised. So uh, this is Krishna's business. Vishma was a devotee, great devotee of Krishna. So he promised uh, that either Krishna uh, would break his promise, other his friend will be dead. So uh, he broke his promise. So sometimes Krishna breaks his promise, own promise for the sake of his devotee. Nobody is expected to break his promise, but Krishna is so kind. For protection of his devotee, he can do anything. He can break his promise also. This is Krishna's position. So that arrangement with the arrows uh, set up uh, the, 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 the promises. Even though the arrows were taken, Bhishma still declared that I'm going to kill him unless he breaks his promise. That's what I'm going to do. So this exchange between them unfolded on the battlefield. And that exchange is what Bhishma Dev is relishing. How sweet it was. That he, that he made Krishna do that out of his love for Arjuna 
and his superior uh, military strength. Text 38. May he, Lord Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who awards salvation, be my ultimate destination. On the battlefield, he charged me as if angry because of the wounds dealt by my sharp arrows. His shield was scattered and his body was smeared with blood due to the wounds. At the moment of death, let my ultimate attraction be to Lord Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead. I concentrate my mind on the chariot driver of Arjuna, who stood with a whip in his hand and a bridle rope in his left, who was very careful to give protection to Arjuna's chariot by all means. Those who saw him on the battlefield of Kurukshetra attained their original forms after death. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The pastimes of the Lord, beginning from his birth at the prison house of Kamsa, up to the Mausala Leela at the end, all move one after another in all the universes, just as a clock hand moves from one point to another. And in such pastimes, his associates, like the Pandavas in Bhishma, are constant eternal companions. So Bhishma Dev never forgot the beautiful feature of the Lord as part the Sarati, which even Arjuna could not see. Arjuna was behind beautiful Parthasarathy, while Bhishmadev was just in front of the Lord. As far as the military feature of the Lord is concerned, Bhishmadev observed this with more relish than Arjuna. Let my mind, then the verse for today, let my mind be fixed upon Lord Sri Krishna, whose motions and smiles of love attracted the damsels of Brajabhumi, the gopis. The damsels imitated the characteristic movements of the Lord after his disappearance from the rasa dance. Now, Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur's uh, commentary, which is one of the books that Srila Prabhupada referred to, kind of fluffs this out in a slightly different flavor. Purport by Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur. Though you are omniscient, the prema that you desire in my charioteer pastimes is, Arjuna, is in Arjuna alone. It is understood that amongst all the associates with prema, he is the chief. So amongst all the different chivalrous, battlefield, kshatriya, friends of Krishna, associates of Krishna, Arjuna is the, is the chief. So one might say that he's the chief in prema. This is not so. Your deeper, dear gopis, have more, more, the most exalted prema amongst all the devotees. They are superior to Arjuna. No one can dare to pray for their position. Let that be. I will be successful at my death just by indicating their nature. Thus he speaks this verse. He was expert at such physical arts as dancing in the Rasa Lila, expert in expressing mental qualities, such as Dira Lalita, expert in words with joking, expert with the eyes at glancing to show the aspects of prema. The gopis were to be worshipped by all these skillful actions of Krishna. In order to please them, Krishna endowed them with all the best outstanding qualities of himself. The result of their extreme prema was that Krishna, in giving, up his own, in giving all his own qualities, attempted to please them with conciliating love. That display of love, which is without restraints for either party, showed extreme control of Krishna by the gopis and was filled with great bliss. Control of the Lord, manifested as a result of Arjuna's prema, was that Krishna became a messenger and charioteer. The role had restraints for both parties. Arjuna could thus not attain the intimacy with the Lord. He became compliant by offering all his good qualities to the gopis. They had a mutual friendship filled with all happiness because of mutual compliance. Then he bestowed an extraordinary fortune, the dancing, 
songs, and speech during Rasa Lila. And in response, the gopis did the same. In harmony with him, they offered him dancing, song, and speeches in the Rasa Lila. There was no need to teach them anything. They were blinded by the increase of great prema. They did not need practice. How astonishing. They attained all his extraordinary qualities, such as skills in dancing and singing. Krishna did not give his unique extraordinary power to Arjuna. Katam can also refer to Krishna's actions, such as lifting Govardhan Hill. They imitated these actions. Instead of Unmada, sometimes Unmada is seen. This indicates madness and separation. In that extreme state, some of them even merged with the Lord. This is the highest level of exalted prema. Since I am situated between the two limits, why can I, why can I not attain your pastimes as a charioteer, which I desire?